Jesus is in the wilderness. He is fasting and the enemy comes because he thought he was in a weakened position. And Jesus was. He had nothing to fight him with. So you know what he did? He took the word and said, if I don't have the energy, I can't rebuke you. But I'm going to take the word and rebuke you. There's times I'm strong enough. I just say, get behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I'm coming against you. But there's other times I just have to quote the word and trust God that the word works. Attacks in seasons of breakthrough. Say breakthrough. When everything seems to be going right for everybody else, things always seem to go crazy for me. Can you relate to that? When it seems like everybody else is getting their blessing, everybody else's family, everybody else's children's living for God, mine's in jail. Everybody else is being blessed financially and I lose my job. He attacks in times of breakthrough. D, he attacks Daniel, and I've already taught you about how the uh, angel came and the prince stopped the angel and delayed it. Say delayed, but not denied. Just because your destiny's been delayed doesn't mean it's been denied. You got to understand the, the concept of timing again. He attacks in seasons of intense prayer. People say, oh, let's have a prayer revival. Okay, yeah, have one. I'm going to tell you, the more you pray, you're going to stir up hell. Because I told you, new levels, new devils. Don't think you're going to start praying and fasting. Everything's going to get easy. I'm going to tell you, you start praying and fasting, things are going to get worse first. Just write it down. Worse first. Because things always get worse right before they get better. And if you want to go to a new dimension, get ready. If you're going to get to a new dimension, you're going to get hit in a new way that you've never been hit before. So get ready. You can't get a new dimension unless you hit a new devil. The ability to be learned at spiritual warfare gives us an advantage then over the enemy. And here's what you do with that advantage. So the ability to be learned. We're not ignorant concerning his devices, his methodia, his pneuma, his schemes and his devices. The ability to be learned in spiritual warfare gives us an advantage over the enemy. So A, what do we do? We identify the principalities of a geographical area. And I know you've been taught here. Your pastor has taught you what the spirits in Singapore, the spirits in China, spirits in India. You identify who the prince is, who the strong man is. Jesus said, you bind the strong man, you can plunder his house. So you learn through discernment to identify. How many of you have been taught what the strong man is? You identify the principality and the strong man. Lord, what is the spiritual ruler? What's the principality over Singapore, over Malaysia? Show me and I'm going to constantly begin to bombard heaven and build that highway and that gateway and be that mediator between God and man and an intercessor and I'm going to travail and bind it and birth it through. When you do that, you're identifying the principalities of the area. B, reveal and break the yoke. Mm. Caused by secret sin. You do not need to get into spiritual warfare unless you are willing to confess and repent over secret sin. It is ridiculous to try to fight the devil when you know you got sin in your life. Reveal and break yoke caused by secret sin. And then see protection and direction. So you identify principalities. You pray for revelation and revealing and break yoke caused by secret sin. And then you pray for protection and direction. Now, we're going to get, and I'm closing, it's, it's five after four. I've gone an hour, but I'm going to get into this. How many of you, when I was here last time, I just mentioned the sip symptoms of satanic attack or witchcraft praying and how that, what I told you all ago about my wife, that story, how that when someone is praying against you or how that when the enemy is coming against you through spiritual attack, it operates through our emotions and our feelings. When someone is sick, what does the doctor ask you? You go to the doctor. When you go, he knows you have a problem. If you go to the doctor, you're not going for a loan. I can tell you're tired. You didn't get that. Look at me. When you go to a doctor, you don't ask him for a loan. When you go to a mechanic, you don't ask him to give you a hot dog. So when you go to the doctor, he knows you're sick. He asks for your symptoms. You give him your symptoms. 
symptoms and through examining your symptoms, he can diagnose your disease. It is the same way in the spirit. I told you that spirit equals emotion. So God uses our emotions to use us in the spirit. I'm going to talk about the symptoms, say symptoms of a demonic attack. Symptoms of a demonic attack. He uses our emotions. So now here's the thing. Many of us don't understand what these symptoms are. And we live our entire life. Before we do this, why don't you just put your paper down. Stand up. Turn around. Look at the person behind you. And if you're looking at the wall, turn around and face the other people. And say, you sure do look nice. Turn around, face somebody, just turn, face them, that's it. I guess everybody can't turn, somebody be confused. Fate, you sure look nice. Yes, well, aren't you special? Amen. It and Brother Super, an awesome teacher. That's what, no, no. Okay, you sit down again. Feel better? Now, Here's the problem. For every problem, there's a solution. I, I hope that's my whole ministry. Have I been practical this week? Yes. One of my greatest desires is I want to not just talk about the problems. I want to find a solution. I don't want to just know what I need to do. I want to know how to do. Yes. Show me and I'll do it. I've said, Lord, just point me and show me. I'll do it. I'm submitted. I just need to know. His people are destroyed by lack of knowledge. We need knowledge. We need revelation. We need understanding. So... If we, are, if we are soulish people, we proved that already. Say, I am an emotional, spiritual creature. I revealed to you earlier that the only thing that God created by touch failed. What he created by his word existed. So is it possible that God uses our emotions and feelings to use the gifts of the spirit in our life? God uses my feelings, my emotions, my mind. I can smell certain things and know God has taught me. There's a certain smell for cancer that when I'm praying in a prayer line, I can tell there's someone here with cancer. There's a certain smell that I can tell if there's a child molester anywhere close to me. If I'm in a prayer line or praying, there is a smell that I can smell. And I know I'm looking for it. It's like a snake. I'm looking. There is a smell of death that I prayed for people. And there's a certain smell. If I smell that, if the Lord wants me to tell them, I will. If not, I just go on. But they will die. That God uses your different symptoms. Sometimes I see things. Sometimes I hear things. Sometimes God uses emotions. He uses your human emotions and personalities. To, I just freak some of you out. But that's how he uses the gifts of the spirit. He has to use your human part because that's all we've got. So he uses that human part to teach you to grow. So there's six symptoms of spiritual attack. Symptoms of demonic attack. Number one, do any of you remember? Because I've taught this before, but I got to teach it a little deeper. Say fatigue. Fatigue to the point that you can sleep and you get up tired. You feel like you're wading in concrete. You try to worship and it's like your hands are weighed down. You get in the prayer room and it's, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about at four o'clock in the afternoon, right? Now. I'm talking about when you should be reflecting. This, this is how I know. This is how you know it's a spirit of attack. When you're a prayer warrior and you know what it is to pray, especially you intercessors, you know what it is to really feel the anointing. And for days, all you can do when you try to pray is you just want to sleep. Halfway through your prayer time, you jerk yourself awake and you're like, what's wrong with me? Whatever. You just fatigue. You go on vacation. It doesn't help. You take a day off and stay in bed. It doesn't help. It's just, it's almost like it's in your bones. It's a bone type of, of, of tired. It's like you're drained. It's just like something sucks it out of you. Have you ever, can you relate to that? It's that kind of fatigue. Number two is fear. Inordinate fear. Fear that leads to terror. I'm talking about panic attacks in the middle of the night. Nothing really wrong, but yet everything wrong. Fear for your kids to leave. Fear that your husband's going to leave you. Fear of poverty. Fear of cancer. Fear of death. Fear that oh, just almost paranoia, just to the point of terror. Out of the blue, just waking up. 
Waking up in the middle of the night. Your kids are gone. They're 30 minutes late. You're calling all their friends. Where are they? Oh my God, what's going on? Is she dead? Did she get raped? Did something happen? Oh my God, what happened? What happened? And just fear, and it clenches you and it locks you down because fear hath, the Bible said fear hath torment. And it torments you and constantly you try to worship, you try to pray, you try to think, but your mind is racing. What if? What if? What if? What if he leaves me? What if I lose my job? What if this happens? What if an earthquake comes? What about another tsunami? What if this? What? And it just goes 